Today on the Boot Guy, we are looking at the Texas Steer Judd. So if you just stumbled across this video because you're about to pick up a pair of these Texas Steer boots, any of the Texas Steer boots, please watch the whole video, watch it to the end, and then really consider what I say about this boot and your feet. Hey, and guys, if you've owned these in the past, if these were your first pair of work boots, please comment below. Think about telling the story that allowed you to graduate from something like this to a much better boot. It would really help other guys out as they're about to make a purchase of something like this. So the thing about Texas Steer is that it really is an American iconic brand. This whole idea of the blonde boot, the work boot, this is what people think of when they think of work boots. And that's probably why so many people have that price point mentality when they're buying their work boots. What I mean by that is when people look at a well-made high-end work boot and they see the price kind of breaking that $200 mark, they pass out. You got to call 911. You got to revive them because they can't believe it that they're looking at boots that are for work. I mean, it's just work. They're going to get dirty and ruined. Why would you spend so much money on something that's going to get dirty and ruined? Save that money for a pair of Air Jordans or for a pair of dress shoes or something that you're going to wear not all the time. But then for a lot of us guys, we understand that when you spend a little bit more on your feet, that it's going to make your work day a hell of a lot better and it makes a hell of a lot more sense. So about the Judd, well, you've got a rubber sole a hard compound rubber sole that is welted to the upper. And I've spoken about welts before, and I push the welt. This type of construction, I push it because I really like it personally. I understand how the body mechanics work, and I like a welt. Now the problem here, this thing is fully welted, it's put together with some of the crappiest glue there is. As I'm looking at this brand new pair, just by applying parallel pressure to the welt and the sole, I am starting to remove it from the welt. Now they claim the upper is made out of leather, and that claim is really driven home in many ways when it comes to this boot. First off, they mark the boot with a tag to let you know, hey, it's leather. And if that wasn't enough, they actually put it on the box. They had to put a tag in there to say, this is leather. And the reason being is when you touch this thing, especially if you've touched really nice boots before, it doesn't feel like leather. It doesn't feel like any part of this boot was ever part of an animal because it's overly processed. It's chemical processed. This leather is made to be a very consistent product. So each pair doesn't show any blemishes and whatnot. Because you got to remember, if a guy's going to spend 45 bucks on a pair of boots, he might actually look them over and decide to go with another pair of $45 boots and that pair might sit there. Boots like this are all about moving numbers, all about selling, selling, selling. They're not focused on quality and fit. And that gets me to my next part, it is the quality and the fit. Now, the construction on this boot, outside of the sole coming apart and stuff like that, the rest of the construction on the boot is pretty much top notch when you just think about sewing materials together and building something that has to stay together when it's being used in a work environment. Now, the quality of the materials, that's completely different. The construction is good, the quality of the materials is eh, it's, not, it's subpar if it's even that. So the tongue section is a huge piece of padding sandwiched in between a piece of ballistic nylon and it's just equestrian type nylon. It's cheap nylon with that leather again tongue backed to a piece of polyester. Now you got foam inside here. You got nylon on the other side. This is a place where sweat is going to collect and gather. This tongue is going to be soaked every single day that you wear this thing just because of sweat and perspiration. The green material is pulling sweat away. That's kind of the nature of this polyester and polyester in general is to allow moisture to pass through it unless it's been treated for waterproofness. This has not. So this is going to collect all your sweat. By two weeks, three weeks, maybe a month, 
this thing is going to reek because of the use of materials inside there. Now inside the boot, you get that green material all the way through, that polyester. The heel section, there is no heel section. There is no heel cup. It might look like there's one sewn in there, but when you get this thing on your foot, there's nothing there to hold your foot into the boot. It's not saying, hey, tie me up and go kick a shovel. It's kind of saying, hey, let's just take these off. The insole section, well, it's sewn down. But when you push on it, you can feel that there's a little bit of a cushion and you can feel the hard footboard inside there. Now, this boot is really big and loose. It's not wide. It's not like when you buy a better boot and it's made in widths. It's just big, loose, and sloppy. So, you guys with the narrow foot, something like this, wearing it for two or three days, forget about it. It's just going to be a big, loose, sloppy mess. Now, what's surprising is that the hardware, the eyelets, and the laces, they're actually pretty good. It's nice stuff. I mean, they didn't cheap out on that, but I guess hardware nowadays in laces is just kind of like something, they don't make crap anymore. Everything is pretty good because you can't afford having one of these or any of this fall apart because that means the guy's going to bring the boot back because that means it's defective. So they're going to use better stuff on these things that they can really control. Now the weight of the boot, well, that's kind of surprising because they're not relatively heavy at all. Physically, they're not heavy, but due to the materials that they're using, they're gonna feel heavy. So these are coming in at 3.8 pounds for a pair. Now, I realize I didn't have the lace in that boot, but that's not making a big difference at all. Like I said, it's not, it's not the weight that's gonna make this thing uncomfortable. What's gonna make this boot uncomfortable is the construction, is the materials, is the way the boot is shaped and formed and fit. Look at that thing, it's, there's no shape to it. It's a straight toe, boom, ankle. There's nothing there to hold the shape of the foot down. It's as if the person designing it thought that everybody has huge swollen ankles and calves. And I don't think that's the case when it comes to the people who are buying this boot for its intended purpose, and that's to work in it. So my honest feeling on this boot is it's a don't buy it boot. Don't, there's no reason to subject yourself to this unless you have to. And there are situations that I feel a boot like this has some value. Now, for most of us, when we started in the workforce, this is what we went for. This is what mom took us to go get was a Texas steer from Kmart. And that makes sense. Because if you think about it, and today even, if my 15-year-old nephew said to me, hey, I want to go out and I want to start working with one of your plumber buddies, I'd be like, hell yeah, we're going to get you a pair of these Texas steers. We're going to get you out there digging. One, I would think I'm teaching him a life lesson by giving him something that doesn't fit correctly, that he's going to be kicking that shovel, and he's going to understand hard work. I think it's really important for young people to understand hard work. Hard work. Because more than likely, the way hard work has been portrayed is dad's a hardworking guy, but he sends his kids to school so they don't have to work hard, as if there's some sin in working hard, or something like that. So yeah, I would definitely say for a younger person, first pair of work boots, go for it. They're cheap. They're 45 bucks. They're 50 bucks. You're going to get the summer out of them. You're going to be replacing them at the end of the summer. Now for a mature grown man who has to buy work boots, if this is what you're choosing, you really need to start investigating what's out there as it comes to work boots. If you make your living in a blue collar trade and this is what you choose to wear, you should really think about what else is out there. I understand that shops that sell better boots are limited. You have a few really high-end shops. You have a few shops that have one or two numbers. The work boot market is controlled by garbage like this. I understand that. But we have the internet today. We have the Boot Guy video series. There is information out there. There's no reason why we have to subject ourselves to continually buying crap and promoting crap. So that's just my two cents on the whole thing. So that's the Texas Steer Judd in beautiful wheat. If you've worn a pair of these before, please comment below. Let me know the longevity of your pair of Judds or just your pair of Texas Steers in general. So at this point, I'd like to say if you're interested in seeing some detailed photos of this or if you're interested in knowing more about this boot, to swing by the bootguy.com. But 
I'm, I will have a posting for this boot. It just won't be anything that's really riveting and or interesting. There will be some photos, but I think what I might be putting out there are some of the reviews that I've read from other people who have not had good experiences with these boots. Hey, please don't forget to hit my subscribe button below, and remember you can always follow me on Instagram and Twitter. If you're about to pick up a pair of these Texas stairs, please reconsider it. If you have any questions on what else is out there, if you're not good at finding information on good boots, shoot me over an email. Ask me some questions. Let's see if through a few internet links that I can not get you in a better pair of boots. Alright, until next time, I'm the Boot Guy. Thanks a lot for watching.